Tech Tony at Pathfinder Digital Marketing. This is my good friend, uh, Evans, Evan Sanchez. And I met him on, on the blogs on Facebook. It's yeah. uh, His company is Phelps Digital. And uh, I'm going to let him introduce himself a little bit of information. But let me tell you this. This guy, I guess the question that I asked on Facebook was was so urgent. He personally called me to give me the answer <laughs> or originally. So, so I thought uh, that was pretty good, which, led, which is the topic of today. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, demand generation versus demand capture and what's the difference. So uh, Evan's going to take away this little little back a little bit of background yourself and uh, and he he wrote this blog. It's a great article. So go for it, Evan. All right. All right. So my name is Evan Sanchez, and I've been at, in advertising for about twenty years. I started in New York working at ad agencies, doing a lot of direct mail back many eons ago. Um, but that's where I got my start. I've been digital for about ten years now. Um, last year, I was managing over $5 million in ad spend on Google. Um, so, uh, you know, just a little bit of money. Um, but it's, you know, I've learned a lot um, about, you know, the, the path to purchase and demand generation and demand capture. Because um, what, what Tony and I were talking about is that, you know, when, when, I, when, I, when he posted this, this question to me, I did want to explain it to him because I thought it was so important to understand differences between those those two terms. So demand generation, think of it, you know, when you think of the awareness consideration decision funnel, okay, mm -hmm. put that in a line, imagine demand generation on one side and demand capture on the other side. So demand generation is more of awareness building, right? You see yes. this a lot with offline advertising. Right. That's right. Um, we see that with radio, with TV, with with direct mail, and then what happens is everybody sees that content, right? Whatever, wherever they kept, wherever they're looking, and they go to the website, right? So you have demand capture. Demand capture. My definition of demand capture are people who are raising their hands or saying, "I am hungry right now," right? Demand generation is people who you hope will be hungry in the future. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, because that may way you know you get both sides of. I mean, it's also like you you want to play football, right? Without having both a quarterback and a receiver, right? And you want to do advertising without some level of awareness and some level of of demand generation, some, some level of demand capture. This is the way I look at it. So so you want to be throwing the. You want to generate awareness. Now you can still do that digitally too, with display ads, um, with video, things like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you always have to be there to capture it too. Well, because so. because all right, and this is what, part of the question was was I was going to be on a board, and I was going to be like, you know, what's the whole point of radio? TV? It was a board of, board of, of people. It was radio, TV, right. newspaper, and it was oh. me. And I was just like, all right, I, I got to play nice with these folks. But but really, I mean, because Google, really Google Ads, you have to go on like tracking code and you can target your competitors so well. Right. When like on a TV, radio, or even a billboard, you can't target as well. Right. But the way you explained it, it makes sense. You need, pe you need to be in front of those people. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. You can't just use Google. You can't just use Facebook. You have to use the right. other you have to use all the tools available to you and proven channels, right? Like I consider Instagram a proven channel, right? Um, when we, when at my last agency, when I tested Facebook um, with and without Instagram, it performed better with Instagram, right? It just did. And so, but you know, Snapchat, I may be like, hmm, not a proven channel. I may not want to invest there quite yet, you know, but there's some people who, who have a, a risk budget who are willing to do that, right? But I think that being on the proven channels and, and Facebook actually can be awareness, it can be demand generation or demand capture, right? It's not like any of these channels can be, I mean, with it, well, probably offline, like TV is just demand generation. It's never, it's, you know, you can't have demand capture, I guess, if you put like a 1-800 number on there and you're doing the QVC sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. But most of the time it's gonna be a demand generation tool. Right, because people are going to go to a website. Um, but you know, you know, sometimes on video you can do more awareness or consideration. 
I, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at your uh, at your at at, at your at your, uh, your 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 blog and right. uh, the infographic you have attached to it. And then I see your, your point here, where um, on the one side you have the demand generation, and I, I, this is, you, you're categorizing them by by session of awareness, billboard, right. radio, TV commercials. Their awareness. Right. They're not. Um, they they work and they work well. I mean, I have I have a, a HVAC client that does. She uses Google Ads and Facebook, and then uh-huh. depending during the summer we do Miller ads, and we will break it down. Going to Google, get the get the the zip codes, everything, bring it down, and right, right. she will make a Miller ad based off that. My right. my funeral client, they still run an ad on the Sunday newspaper because, like you right. said, it's, it's a proven channel. It works. Right. With, and, and I'm a I'm a direct mail guy. There's a place for that. Do you know what I mean? I think there's a place for whatever you're doing. You just have to really measure the effectiveness out of the, and figure and the opportunity cost, right? Mm-hmm. Because direct mail can be very expensive. Yeah, right? and, yeah. Post and, post is, uh, stamps are expensive. Fifty five cents, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Just postage alone. You know, I remember clients coming to me when I was up in New York, and they were like, uh, I don't know, postage was like thirty five cents or thirty nine cents at the time, and they're like, we want to print out, um, we want we want to do this mass mailing of a million pieces for forty one cents. You know, <laughs> and postage was thirty nine. <laughs> right? So, oh, you had to make the little post too? Like all that within the budget of 41 cents a pop? They were like, yeah. That's not happening. <laughs> yeah, that's, we'll see if we can get that cost per piece down, but I don't know about 41 cents, right? So, But the point is is that you have to look at your budget and see where the opportunities are. Now, see, what I see, for this, especially with small dealers, and, and tell me if, if you you have a different experience, um, Tony, but like they um, – a lot of them think that you know just doing digital is going to is going to save their company and turn it around. And in some cases, it can. Yeah. In some it can. It generally can. You know. But I was dealing with mattress dealers, and they thought that you know they didn't need any any awareness whatsoever, right? We mean um, no awareness, like no no TV, no, no radio, no Google, no, no nothing, no display ads. Just they just need a Google search. Oh. You know, and for a mattress, that's a considered purchase, right? You just don't go out and buy a mattress on a whim, not like you go on Amazon and spend a hundred dollars, right? Or fifty dollars, right? Yeah. You know, so a considered purchase, you have to look at the buying cycle and you have to, and I would see some mattress dealers that on their company name, and I think I mentioned it in the blog, is like they would have like 50 impressions over the last 30 days. Right? That showed to me that they were doing no demand generation at all. Oh. For, for their store. I think historically, that like I'm aware of, there's one company that does zero form of advertising besides print ads in the store itself. It's a restaurant. Okay. It's um, Waffle House. Okay. They're not even allowed to advertise job opening positions. <laughs> I think I met one of their reps, and she's like, "Yeah, we." Because she was talking, we were all talking about about Google search. She's like, "We're not even allowed to do that." Wow. I mean, I I can't think of any company that 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 can't survive on not being able to have both sides of the spectrum. I just can't think of that of that happening. Yeah, it's it's very hard to to have. I mean, even if you use Google Display Network to get your awareness, you do need some awareness, right, of mm-hmm. your brand. Right, and and some of these companies have been around for fifty years, so they have built-in brand awareness, right? Or if they've been around a hundred years, they probably have a good amount of brand awareness. They've been they've survived that long. People should know about them. But not all companies, like you know, especially for brick and mortar startups, you know, unless they're part of a franchise, they'll have that, right? <laughs> well, Facebook still runs TV ads, and uh-huh. Facebook spends money on Google ads. <laughs> Exactly. Even um, I tell I tell clients that, that uh, the U.S. the U.S. Army in America they run TV ads, they run ads on Facebook, they run ads on Google. Who's not looking for a recruiter in their area? It's not like as a young eight year old living in America, I'm going to be like, well, I'm going to join the U.K. Army instead. <laughs> yeah, not so much. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's we are showing this. I show them this, and they go, oh, well. 
it must work. I'm like, yeah, now, now hence the, their Facebook and, and the U.S. military, they have oodles of money to spend on advertising. But the small biz owner, explain them, you're right. Explain them, you know, hey, run your TV ads, run your radio ads. People need to know you exist. But on the other end, in order to actually generate that lead into a cell, you're going to need this side of the spectrum, too. You need, you need both well, sides. You're going to have both sides of the spectrum, right? How you, how you do it is based on your business, your business model, what works for, for that individual um, for that ind- individual business, right? Um, but Google search is, you know, is where everybody looks. I mean, that's the main capture. I mean, you don't accidentally type in a pizza if you're looking for a sofa. <laughs> right, you know, you're not you're not going to do that. You're not going to you're not going to you're not going to do that. That's the most targeted form of advertising you have. You know, but it does cost to to be in there, and you have to manage it effectively. And that's where you know your service comes in handy because there's a lot of good ways to spend money on Google that aren't effective. And if you don't know the rabbit holes, right? If you don't know what to look for then it's very easy to spend a lot of money and waste it. That's true. It's, 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 you have to maximize the efficiency of the spend and you have to be looking at those accounts and you have to be optimizing those accounts and coming up with new ideas for A-B testing and stuff like that because Google is great about um, finding ways to spend your money. Yeah. Uh, some of those lot of small businesses you realize um... – I don't, know how, I don't know how you feel about uh, AdWords Express or Smart Ads, as they're called now, yeah. or three clicks and you're on there. But that's one. That's one of the best examples I've seen where Google, it, Google will be like, like, hey, just just click here, 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 and give us a budget of whatever, and then we'll get you. That's the best way Google has wasted people's money. I, I, I have felt personally. Yeah, I, I have not seen successful Express campaigns. Right. Not to say that there aren't any, but I just haven't seen. Them, right. <laughs> Um, um, and how long, have, how long have you been doing this again? <laughs> how long have you been doing this again? <laughs> oh, like ten years. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't seen that work, right? I just, I just haven't seen it. Um, you know, but uh, I'm always happy for people to prove me wrong, but um, I haven't seen it yet. But, but you know, the thing is, is like you have to be up on the trends. Like Google's always changing. Like ad positions going away this year. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah. And if you don't know about that, then then you're gonna then that's gonna be a problem, right? Um, for a lot of people. So I think that you know, it's much easier on the demand generation side because all you have to deal with is impressions, right? You don't have to really manage much more. There's not you know there there's not too much. You know, there's some audience targeting and stuff like that that you can do, but you can't do as much as you can on the demand capture side, right? But also, you want to make sure on the demand capture side that you're targeting the same audience that you're, you know, doing on the demand generation side. What I always say is like, you know, you want, um, like, if you're doing a Google Display campaign, Mm -hmm. right? For instance, you probably want to match the geography to your demand generation campaign. Right. Yeah. So if you're going out 50 miles for TV, but you're only going out 20 miles for display, right? You should probably have those lined up a little bit more. It's, it's my opinion. Um, and so and it's funny you, you say that because you, you have TV commercials all over here uh, with awareness next to billboards and, and radio ads. Right. And then on the other end, you have that SCM retarget marketing for. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And and that graph that 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 you have there, Tony, is is not exact. No, it's right? not. No, you know, it's 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 generally directional. And that's why I, I call. I had to call you and explain it. <laughs> like, here's a blog post, but I really need to explain it to you because you know Facebook can move across that spectrum, right? And I think that's what's so um, important to know. I, I think for the everyday person, it's a dang good idea. And, and we're not bashing either side here, folks. I want you guys to know you guys watching this video. We're not bashing either side. If possible, uh, and I'm sure Craig does the same thing. He tells his clients, hey, you should use as much as you can, right? Exactly. Exactly. And you should also look at, you know, um, you know, and sometimes the market, right? Because some markets, radio will perform really well. 
you know, I've seen it, you know, but also you have to consider, like, I've seen some people spend $15,000 on radio, you know, for a month. And, you know, is, and maybe for your, and it's, that may not make sense in, you have to look at it as budget allocation, right? Mm -hmm. You have a marketing budget, which should ideally be around, you know, eight, 10% of, of, but actually, this is something I learned. So people always say, you know, I want to make a million dollars, you know, or oh, my business wants to be a million dollar business, or if they're not there yet, right? Uh -huh. But I only have five hundred dollars to spend, right? <laughs> that doesn't make sense, <laughs> right? And that's not going to work, obviously. Depending on the maturity of your business, you may want to spend. You know, if your business is not mature, you may want to spend twelve to twenty percent of your sales goal. Right of your sales goal, not of your current revenue. So when you're looking at budgets, you know what I say to people is that you want to look at, at what is your sales goal and go off of that. Mm -hmm. Right, and then you have to factor in the maturity of the business. If the business hasn't been around too long, you need maybe spend twelve to twenty percent of your your goal, right? Your sales goal. Whereas if you're established business, you may only need to go eight to twelve. Oh. You know, of your, of your revenue. So it depends on where you are, because again, you need to, to back to the point of demand generation, you have to generate that demand and generate that awareness, right? Because you haven't been around for a long time. So when you're a new fledgling business, you have to probably invest more than you think, you know, to, to do that, but always go off your sales goal, not done off your current revenue. That's some That's awesome. Money. That's some awesome advice, man. Um, uh, Craig, I mean Evan, do you have do you have any anything else, any other information you want you want people to know about? Um, I am going to give a, put a link to to his blog, so uh, you small business owners can read it and get a really good grasping idea of how this works. Because every business owner knows you got to advertise, you got to market. Every business knows, um, like for example, my my uh, business all explains. Uh, he says Google's a little black box. We all need it, but we don't know how it works. <laughs> but it's this is a great article. The cool thing, it's not that long of an article either. Just straight up no, informative. Not, no, it's not, and it's and it's from my previous company. So, um, so you know, they'll, they'll be happy for the traction. Um, you know, you need, um, you need to pour it over to your, to a new blog then. <laughs> we need to do that, but you know, they they kind of help massage my words and make them you know, <laughs> a little better and they did do the graph. So I got to give credit for that. But yeah, um, they're a great company as well. They're an SEM company. I worked for them for, um, for almost five years. Um, but, um, but I think the other thing that, I, that, you know, I think is important is, is just to, you know, get expertise like yourself, right? Because people think that they can do this on their own. And I think that that's not the case. Unless you live in this world, you don't know questions to ask, right? Yeah. And you don't know the rabbit holes that, that can be gone down and, and you're going to waste more money. I've tried running campaigns myself when I first started and I was spending money. I had no idea, right? Like I was, I, I thought I was doing great, but now that I look at my campaigns, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, it's, it's just like anything. You, you go to a foot doctor because they specialize in feet. You go to an S, you know, an SEM, um, you know, somebody who specializes in SEM for that very reason. Um, and specializing is so important and people get caught up in, and I've seen this so many times and I can't tell you how many times I've seen this. And they say, well, this person will do everything. Oh, no. yeah. No. The, all, the all in one shop, right? And, and it doesn't work out. <laughs> it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. They never do as good a job. I've yet to see it where they like can do TV, radio, and digital. Right? Um, it's just where you focus. You, you know, it's like going to a general practitioner if you have a problem with your foot. You know, you, you can't you can't do that. You know, and, and that's where I see the big trap of people falling in to, you know, oh my God, you know, um, you know, I found this provider and it'll just be one call a month, right? But if they don't specialize in it, you know, they're not going to be able to, to, to know enough about it. So I'd appreciate, you know, people who specialize in SEM, right? And that's their focus because I think that's, um, 
because there's so much to unpack there. You know, it's kind of like five five inches wide, but 30 miles deep <laughs> in terms of what you can do. Well, uh, I always explain to people, anyone can do their own plumbing, right? A lot, uh, but when it, when the, the pipe breaks and you try to fix it on your own, then you call the plumber. When the plumber gets there, he tells you, it would have been cheaper if you just called me when it happened. <laughs> and I'm I have totally personally experienced that. that. I'm really guilty of that. I know when to outsource my home projects because I'm like, I'm not handy at all. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm all willing to, you know, hire a plumber for their expertise and and make sure that everything goes right because nine times out of ten, when I go to do a plumbing job, there's something wrong that I can't fix. <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, I think that that's the important thing to know is to is to just understand the difference between demand generation, demand capture, and and you know, you have to look at you know your sales goal and which what you can afford from a budget perspective and manage that as efficiently as effectively as possible. And that's where people like you come in is saying, you know, this I know this world and I know how to, you know, stop the holes. So Perfect. Thank you so much, man. It's, it's been yeah, a pleasure sure. talking to you again. Sure, sure. Always happy to help. And yeah, we're we're not trying to de I never try to demonize like if somebody's doing radio or T V or offline. I think that those are important channels too. But you've got to look at your asset allocation. I've seen, you know, people spend three to four million dollars on TV and not spend anything on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube is literally becoming a uh, cable TV's competitor. Right, exactly. So I mean it's the second most popular search engine and people aren't using it. You know, and you have to know the right strategies. Like you can't you have to put your brand in there the whole time. You have to put your brand logo in there the whole time, right? Because people are going to skip at five seconds, seven seconds, 20 seconds, 29 seconds, right? And you can get a free brand impression and not have to pay for it on YouTube, right? But I think people, you know, those sort of things, that's, that's where expertise really comes into play. So, uh, Yeah, it's true. I, I, I can totally agree with you on that. There's a, a buddy of mine that he got, he's working with a local news station and they weren't really doing, they weren't, uh, they, they had social media platforms, but they weren't doing anything with right. them. And so what he did, they, they went out, they got some new cell phone plans. They had a cell phone for Facebook, cell phone for Instagram, cell phone for Twitter. Right. And when they would do the go on, go live on the news, he was going live on each of those platforms. Right. And they started seeing that the people were reacting more on their cell phone than they were on the TV. And what people were doing right. as the news was rolling, they were asking questions and they were able to engage with their customer, with their with the engage yeah. with the community. Live right. right there. And they're getting them information as quick as they could possibly feed it to them. And that, and that's that's beautiful when you have a real relationship with customers. Because I always say, like, you know, I can I've worked with some great copywriters, they came up with some great copy, but nothing's gonna beat the customers words, right? Whatever they say is going to be more profound than anything that a copywriter can think of. You know, um, you know I, I'm all for feedback because that's the way you learn and grow, right? And you get inside the minds of the customer, right? And we can write great copy ourselves. I mean, we do. But, you know, to get, to get the customer testimonial, right? I think that's always something that people miss on YouTube, too, is like getting a customer testimonial on YouTube or three or four of them making them into a YouTube ad, that's going to speak volumes more than a regular ad, right? Because you get their actual words and how they actually, actually feel about the product or service. So anyway, I'm sorry, went off on a couple no, of tangents. You're fine. That, you're you're fine, fine, man. Um, um, I think the other thing that I wanted, uh, another thing I wanted to bring up was um, real quick, Facebook lookalike audiences. Oh, please do. Yes. So something that works for online mattress dealers and something that I think people should consider, right, is when you're doing online advertising, right, on Facebook, is you should set up um, add to cart and checkout as conversions, right, if you don't already, you know, if you're, if you're doing some sort of, you know, online purchase, do set up those two conversions and then set up lookalike audiences based on those conversions. Interesting. And, that, and that's and that's <laughs> and that's very cool because you're getting to people who are more likely to add to cart or check out. 
right? So another little tidbit that I've learned along the way. That I've never about, but I thought, but it worked really well for all my mattress dealers. <laughs> That's you neat. Know? I didn't even think about yeah. that. I didn't you can do that with Google too, right? Yeah. You can set up, you can set up similar audiences. Um, you retargeting with them. And retarget and retarget those people. You know, set up a retargeting list based on the people who added cart and checked out. Yep. We're going broadly. So anyway, went on a few tangents, but I think it's all good. <laughs> Evans, I appreciate your time, man. Yeah, thank you so much, Tony. You take care. Have a great day. Okay, you too. Bye.